Välkomna igen då. Nathalie Jelinek heter jag. Jobbar som pedagogiskt utvecklare och kommer nu byta till engelska för det är några här som eh, kanske har anmält sig till det engelska spåret. Så so att uh, welcome again. <laughs> Double welcome to all of you here. Um, my name is Natalie and I work as an educational developer developer here and um, I will be serving as a moderator during this these two days here and um, I'm gonna guide you a little bit through the program so that we're all on the same page and you know where to go especially for coffee and if you need to use the restroom and these very important issues that you should be aware of in terms of logistics um, so we have developed uh, quite an interesting program we think one that allows you um, to look at internationalization of education at SLU, both in terms of a strategic issue, uh, big questions and uh, um, challenges that um, it might raise at different levels. And we thought we could do this as um, in terms of big questions, but also coming down to your roles as a teacher in the classroom in interactions with your students. So that's kind of the rationale behind this program that we tackle internationalization in terms of big questions that then come down to your role as a teacher. So we have space for interactions with other teachers um, where you can ask questions. We also have a special room that we've reserved. If you meet somebody interesting that you maybe don't have a chance to meet on a daily basis because they're in another campus so that you can discuss with them. There's poster sessions um, and there's also room in the program um, for you to have these exchanges. Um, all of the plenaries, the, the big meetings um, and keynotes are in this room. So um, there's one today and one tomorrow. All of the breakout sessions, so there's three different um, tracks. One of them is in English. They are all in the Undervisningshuset and they are all in rooms that are very close to one another. And those um, are H, N and J. And you have a program and you should have a map also in this little folder. If you haven't looked in your green bag, there's a folder and a map. Um, coffee will also be in the same area. So when we are done here, we will all move together to the coffee uh, by those three rooms. And then you have some optional activities this afternoon at five. If you haven't chosen one, that's okay. You can just join one of the four activities. They're in your program and there's two uh, meeting times. So you can look at the program and uh, somebody will be picking you up there. You can also look for this, uh, the neon band at that time. Somebody will pick you up from um, Ullshus, the reception there, the entry, entrance floor. So there's four different activities that you were able to choose from. Uh, restrooms are over there, um, just up the stairs. I have been told to let you know in case of emergency, feel like a stewardess, there's two <laughs> exits, one over there, one over there. Uh, and we have a person in the room that is our evacuation uh, responsible, exactly. Helene will be guiding you so that we're all safe and sound. Videotaping. Um, because we have three campuses and not everyone can be here at once, uh, the keynotes will be videotaped. And uh, our colleagues will also be videotaping here and there. So if there are people that are uncomfortable, don't want to be videotaped, you can let me know. And we will make sure that you are not videotaped at all during these two days. So please let us know. Presentations are going to be available, uh, all of them, on our site. So um, as soon as possible, we will be putting them up. And some presentations will be in English uh, and some in Swedish. If the presentation in this room, for example, um, is in Swedish, we will be videotaping it and putting it up on our website with subtitles so people can access it. Um, I think this is it. We end to tonight with dinner and music and a 10-man band. So we invite you to join us um, this evening to keep uh, the discussions alive. I hope I haven't missed anything of my um, logistical questions. Mobile phones, please be kept on silent. Yes? <laughs> um, okay. So our um, first presentation today is from our Pro Vice Chancellor for International Relations, Ilva Hilbur, who is going to be talking to us about internationalization as a strategic university priority and will be discussing SLU strategic direction document for internationalization of first and second cycle education at SLU. Quite a title in English. Welcome. 
<laughs> Presentation is in Swedish. Um, and uh, it's called SLU's Inrikningsdokument for Internationalisering, Hur påverkade mig som lärare. And that was a title given to me, and I'm presenting on behalf of the group who's been writing that document, and that is Natalie, Helena, somewhere in the room, Geir, and myself. And um, the background to this document was that we were assigned by Utbildningsnämnden, and the Board of Education, to try to capture the various aspects of internationalization in relation to our educational programs at both levels. And uh, we also had a couple of other documents to relate to. We had SLU's overall strategy, 2017 to 2020. We had an uh, inrikningsdokument for education, the general one, and also the so-called internationalisering And that was fortunate for us that in 2018, Agneta Blad presented the investigations she did on behalf of the government on internationalization of universities in higher education, which gave us many ideas and also a framework to relate to. And for us, it felt even more timely to produce the document that we did. So I think you all agree with me that all research and education happens in an international context. And that for quality, we really need to be open. We need to have interna international exchange, influences, interactions, to make sure that we remain relevant and provide education and research of the highest international quality and standards. The International Science of Training, or the document produced uh, by the uh, um, Commission study, um, also emphasizes competition and attraction of talent. How do we attract the best teachers, the best students to Sweden? How does Sweden remain, or not remain, but rather become more influential in terms of higher education and research internationally? So that was an important component and, and really a, a, a thread throughout that document. And it sort of relates to our own projects of doubling in the amount of students. We need to, I think we're all agreeing that for us to double the amount of students, we will have to also attract internationally. We will have to recruit international students to come here. It also relates to Agenda 2030 and the SDGs, so the Sustainable Development Goals, especially goal number four of quality education for all, and goal number 17 regarding international collaboration for the goals. So I think we need to have a strategy and think through how do we contribute to Agenda 2030 as a university on the international arena. And most importantly, of course, to prepare our students for a globalized um, job market, but also for intercultural um, challenges that they may encounter in Sweden, but also if they opt for an international career. Now, if we talk about the internationalization and also looking to that document, the Internationalisering and it's sort of divided into two major headings, mobility and internationalization at home. And this is how we have structured our document as well. We found that a useful way of, of trying to uh, organize our thoughts. And if we look at mobility, of course it's an extremely valuable experience, but it's for the individual. Those fortunate few that get a chance to spend three months at another university in another country. Uh, whereas internationalization at home, which is actually a Swedish concept to start with, is a way for us to provide an international context for all our students here. Also those that do not get a chance to travel abroad during their studies. <laughs> the, um, 
and uh, I might repeat this word several times, internationalisering zu trainingen, talks about comprehensive internationalization, which is translated into integrerad internationalisering. And that is a thought that emana emanates from uh, John Hudzik um, at um, MSU, Minnesota State University, uh, where he talks about, and I think it's based on his own experience, running an international office in a little house, sort of at the fringe of campus, trying to get some internationalization going. So he strongly advocates for and feels that if there's going to be any impact of internationalization, it has to be integrated into everything that we do. It has to impact our research, our educational programs at all levels, all our courses, and everybody has to contribute and be part of this project of internationalization within the university. University management, researchers, teachers, administrative staff, most importantly the students, of course. So this is the definition in Swedish. Um, but one can also try to just make a simple model, and this is as simple as it gets, and it is also reflecting my graphic design abilities. Uh, so just trying to show that everybody's involved in this project, but at the center and at the front stage, you have the students and, of course, the re researchers and teachers play an extremely important role in internationalization of the university. But we all have to work together in a concerted way to make this happen. So the document that we produced, well, to be honest, we started out in a very structured way, and we thought of activities, and we put a deadline to when they were going to be completed, and we had goals and indicators, and we uh, assigned responsibility to dif these different actors that you see here. And then it was on a review uh, to Utbildningsnämnden and others, and we got pushback saying that this is overwhelming. We're doing a lot of different things and we simply cannot, it, it's just going to be off-putting, it's too much. So we, just, we thought that was a really valuable feedback and we said let's, let's take a different uh, approach to this and let's make it more like um, a suggestion box or um, a resource document where different actors can pick different activities based on where you are in the process, what you feel is relevant, and prioritize. So this is how this document is to be read. There is still what is relevant for different actors, but there is no must-haves by a certain date. So it's a very open document in that sense. So it's more of a collection of what are the things through this inventory that we made that we think would be relevant to implement to move SLU towards increased internationalization. Um, and as I mentioned before, so the time frame is 2019 to 2023. And uh, we, as I mentioned before, we decided to structure it in mobility and internationalization at home. And what I will do now is just to try to give you a few examples of what are these activities that we have identified and also, so you get a feel for what the document might contain that you might, might, might be interesting for you. Um, and also, um, I'm mentioning which are the other actors that will support the implementation of the activities that I mention. Is that reasonably clear? Well, we'll try, anyway. So if we look at the internationalization at home, one important activity is, of course, to incorporate international and intercultural perspectives in all course and outbildings um, plan of anyone who has the English term for that? Study plans. Syllabus. Syllabus. Thank you very much. Um, and I, I know we do it, but we can perhaps, perhaps do even better in that regard. To think through when we develop a new one, how can we even further emphasize the international perspective? And most importantly, I think also, when you're running a course and you know you have international perspectives, perhaps 
highlight that to the students, make it even more visible, even more clear that this is what it is, to inspire some reflections among the students. The use of MOOCs, uh, we have one, there may be more, but Wageningen, they have, I don't know how many, 50 at least, and they are delighted to have us use their MOOCs. So I think there are lots of resources out there that we can also use in our courses and our educational programs to facilitate internationalization at home. Uh, you will hear more about it during these couple of days here on the virtual mobility and the, the opportunities that that uh, gives in terms of uh, collaborating with other universities internationally. To use uh, foreign or international foreign students and teachers that are at your department to involve them in the education and to use their experience uh, and knowledge to give that international perspective on the course that you're teaching. And there are ample opportunities to apply for funding from Utbildingsnemden for internationalization projects. Should also be looked after. And this is uh, something that we have assigned uh, or think that the new Avdelningen for Lærende um, Digitalisering uh, might approach. It's about intercultural competence uh, development also among students. Uh, Swedish courses, uh, language cafes, different activities. And you can see here that this is one of the uh, units that we expect to support the implementation of internationalization at home, together with Utbildningsavdelningen, the library, and the students. So if we now look at mobility and students going out from uh, SLU. Now, I didn't have a lot of time to pick photographs, but I thought this was kind of appropriate <laughs> for this particular issue. Anyway, so I think um, it is clear that the inspiration and the motivations that teacher can give to students to try and to uh, take that leap to spend uh, three months at another university is extremely important, and I think you play a very important role. So, invite Utbildningsavdelningen to your courses and your programs so they can inform about the practicalities and the opportunities for scholarships, uh, what are partner universities, what are the different programs, etc. I think that's an important first step. And then at a higher level, of course, that we have mobility windows at all programs, that we facilitate the, um, and now I need help with Tigudre Knande. Anyone? Sorry? Transfer credits, thank you, Mats. Transfer credits when you've been away and coming back so that you can get that, those credits for your mobility and that you're then not excluded because you have prerequisites for courses when you come back that you cannot fulfill because you've been away. So simply facilitate for students to actually um, use the opportunity of attending an, or participating in an exchange program. Um, and we've also been discussing the possibility of facilitating, especially at programs where there is now a relatively low mobility, by pointing at or identifying tracks at partner universities that sort of makes it easier and that um, gives you a, a direction and reassures the student that this fits really well with my program so you don't sort of lose time by leaving your university. And if we look at the goals in the um, strategy, we have a goal that by 2020, that is next year, 20% of our students should have um, experience of an international exchange during their studies. An international exchange here in this context is defined by the EU definition, which means three months full-time studies or um, practic uh, hmm? internships. Thank you. Um, and we do have, by 2017, the number was 10% of our students 
who had that experience. I think it has increased a little bit, but we're not quite at 20%, and we, it's not likely, given the development, that we will be at 20% by next year. However, there is a great variation between programs, and so at some programs we have mobility that is between 30 and 40%, and in some programs it's zero, basically zero. So we need to look at that in a differentiated way to be able to identify where do we need to focus our efforts to increase mobility. And we also need to look at it in a more um, all-encompassing way, because these three months, it's, it's a challenge. It's more of an effort, it's more difficult, but we do a lot of other types of international exchange activities that we also need to include and we need to report on. So, for instance, uh, we know that the veterinary students, they have very little mobility within their programs, but they are the ones using the minor field studies at the most. So which comes after they've, more often comes after they've finished their study programs than during the study program. So we need to, to look at it in a more uh, fair way to get an idea of what is actually the mobility that is going on and what is the international exchange that is going on. And we need to look at these shorter studies, the Nord Plus, ELS, Linnaeus Palma, there are many different types of exchange. So we just need to get our statistics a little bit more precise and diverse to be able to uh, see where do we focus our um, different activities. Now for students to come to SLU, of course they need to know about us and they need to be interested in coming here. And uh, we should facilitate for them to uh, join SLU for studies. And when they're here, they should feel that this was the best choice they ever made. So when they leave, they become excellent SLU ambassadors. So we need to be strategic when we uh, look at recruitment. I think our ranking as of now helps in terms of attracting uh, international students. As I said, we need to equip our students and teachers going out with materials so they can be our ambassadors and we need to use our alumni and we're working on our alumni internationally as well to help us in recruiting uh, students. And of course to be welcoming and to be an option for uh, English speaking students, we need to have a good and broad set of courses that they can attend that are relevant and coherent. So we need more courses, we need whole semesters in English, and um, why not a complete bachelor program in English? And there are advanced plans for at least two of those, I think, by 2021. Um, and Antognesprocessen, admission process, need to be facilitated perhaps or reviewed. And we need to just receive them really well. We know we, we do really well and we do get good reviews and I think many of our students appreciate the way uh, we welcome them here. But I think we, we can always do better and uh, we come out fairly well in the International Student Barometer. But it's easy to, as one of the indicators, just say we're going to do even better. So that's one where we have a clear target and goal. For teachers, I'm sure you know of this, there are plenty of opportunities for mobility. Erasmus Plus offers, so I'm told I haven't tried to apply myself, but it's a simple process. Uh, two days to two months of exchange, uh, very open in terms of what are the deliveries and the obligations during this exchange uh, periods. And uh, mobility at slu.se would be delighted to help you if you'd be interested in applying for an exchange under Erasmus+. Plus. There is Linnaeus Palme. Some of you have probably worked with that. It's a department-to-department -department, uh, collaboration uh, focusing on low-income countries, and it's for teachers and student exchange. We are part of a number of networks, and I think one of our most important networks is the EuroLeague for Life Sciences, or ELSE, and I will talk a little bit more in detail about that one. 
but it currently makes up for about 25% of our student exchange. So it is an important network that can also be used for teachers to um, collaborate across Europe. They're actually also outside Europe. I think it's important at the department level to look at mobility and experiences from being abroad, working at a university for a while as um, capacity building and also to make it part of your CV and the Pedagogiska Merit Portfolio. Um, and this is where uh, heads of departments and, uh, would play an important role in stimulating and supporting these activities. So just briefly on the ELSE network, I don't know if all of you know about it, some of you might. So it's been uh, up and running for, I think, around 15 years at least. Uh, it's SLU, it's Boku in Austria, Wageningen, uh, it's uh, Warsaw, Hohenheim, Copenhagen Science Faculty, it's the Czech uh, University of Life Sciences, and it's Hebrew University of Jerusalem as a non-European partner, as well as Lincoln University in New Zealand. So it's a strong network, uh, lots of different activities, uh, we do some joint programs, lots of summer schools for uh, PhD students, and teachers get together under certain subject areas and create course activities. And the uh, goal, of course, is to increase the quality, but also to facilitate mobility. And one special activity is that the ELS network does is a scientific student conference. And we have uh, the privilege to host this conference in November this year. Um, it's for master students and uh, it's usually a very um, popular event. We have 180 students that have applied for this conference this year. Unfortunately, not that many SLU students. I don't know what we can do about that, but um, please encourage any student that you see. Um, so they present talks, posters, uh, we have invited speakers, there are different uh, prizes uh, and awards, and of course it's a great networking opportunity for students. So it's on the 14th and 16th of November here. 14 to 15 it's the General Assembly, or as it's also called, Wuxenkonferenzen. Uh, and then 15 to 16, it's a student conference. Um, and Emma, there, and Gay uh, and myself, uh, if you're interested in uh, else, any aspect, please contact any of us. So one final activity that is part of the Inrichtungsdokument is uh, coordination for better support. Uh, and it's clearly spelled out in the document that we need a, a cross-university um, network for exchange of information and trying to look at synergies um, and increase collaboration around um, international um, educational exchange issues. So we're a big group of people. We've met twice. Uh, just to get to know each other, and uh, we would very much appreciate your thoughts on what are the issues we need to look into. You can see on the list of, of uh, groups that are involved if there's anyone else who would like to be part of this network or who you think should be part of the network or if there are particular issues that you think we can solve by talking more to each other, please let us know. So what has happened and uh, what is happening? So within the document, one of the activities is to have um, Utbinis conference around internationalization. And as we speak, this is ongoing. Uh, to have this group of coordination, we've started. I know that Utbinis of Delingen, you've uh, done your um, plan of, for the year based on this document. So really moving along with the ideas. And we have the ELSE conference. There are the two uh, bachelor's programs that are in the planning process. And Utbinis uh, Nemden in uh, the spring meeting will 
follow up on, on the implementations of this program. As this will also happen during the, the quality assurance dialogues where there are a number of questions relating to internationalization. So that's another opportunity to get a feel for how we're moving with this. And finally, 2023, we will make a full evaluation of what has been achieved. Just um, for further discussion during these couple of days, so any good examples and how can we learn from each other? And what are the challenges and what kind of support is the most needed? Please let us know. Thank you. <laughs>